I would like to summarize uh, shortly what we've shown before in the two other webinars on the science of glycocalyx and on the glycocheck device to measure in patients and healthy people uh, how healthy their microvascular system is and how healthy their glycocalyx is. As discussed before, if we look at the vascular system, most people know that the large arteries take the blood to the uh, tissues and the organs, and then the large veins take the blood back to the heart. If you zoom in with a big microscope, you'll see that most of your vascular system, to 99%, is actually the smallest blood vessels, where the red cells have to flow through one by one, called the microscopic capillaries. And then if we zoom in with a big microscope on an individual capillary, you realize that red cells are flowing through one by one, but they never touch the surface of the vessel wall. And there's a big gap between the compartment in the center where the red cells are flowing and the luminal surface of the endothelium. We now know that in this big gap between the red cells and the vessel wall, it's not just flowing fluid, but it's this transparent protective gel matrix called the glycocalyx that turns out to be essential to keep your microvascular system healthy and modulates all of the known functions of the endothelium. So now when we zoom in even further into this space with an electron microscope, you get images like these. Again, this is a cross-section of one of these capillary blood vessels in myocardial tissues. On the right-hand side, it's a larger magnification. So on top would be where the red cells are flowing. Here below is the endothelial lining on the inside of the blood vessel wall. And on the surface of the endothelial cells, you see these extensive three-dimensional polysaccharide matrix, which makes up the core of the uh, endothelial glycocalyx. So these polysaccharides, they extend up to a micron or more into the lumen of microvessels, occupying a lot of volume. Now in the capillaries, they occupy up to two-thirds of the volume of these capillaries, and thereby are crucial to controlling blood content and the way red cells and other cells, like platelets and leukocytes, interact with the endothelium. Now, these polysaccharides, predominantly heparin sulfate polysaccharides and hyaluronic acid, they bind a lot of the plasma proteins, and the proteins suck in a lot of the fluid into the matrix, forming a very stable gel-like matrix that prevents direct contact between the circulating blood and the luminal surface of the endothelium. Now, over the years, we, we and many others have studied the uh, functional implications uh, of this glycocalyx for endothelial function, and we've learned that these structures, the polysaccharides of the endothelial glycocalyx, are crucial to tell the endothelium to start producing nitric oxide and blood flow increases to minimize the shear forces acting on the vessel wall. Also, we realized that binding of ported enzymes like superoxide dismutase to the polysaccharides of glycocalyx is essential to capture the oxygen radicals that are locally produced to prevent that these oxygen radicals will do damage to your blood vessels. Also, we realized that the tight nature of the polysaccharides in that matrix prevents leakage of fluids and proteins and larger molecules like cholesterol from the blood compartment into the vessel wall and leaving the vascular system. Also, the size of the glycocalyx up to a few microns not only prevents red cells to touch the endothelium, but also prevents other circulating cells like platelets and leukocytes to stick to the small adhesion molecules, which are only nanometers long and produced on the membrane of the endothelium. So a healthy glycocalyx prevents adhesion and sticking of the platelets and also prevents the activation of the local inflammatory response by preventing circulating leukocyte to stick to the endothelial adhesion molecules. After we discussed the science, I also discussed in the previous presentation the use of the glycocheck device. So with the glycocheck device, we can measure life by monitoring how red cells are flowing through the microvasculature in the sublingual capillaries, how healthy your microvascular system is, and how it changes when people are exposed to different risk factors like obesity. So this slide showed the impact of obesity on microvascular health by counting the number of the smallest capillaries in people's at low risk risk or at medium risk or high risk for future cardiovascular disease. But these are still healthy individuals, but by adding up all the risk factors like you know, age, body size, and smoking, etc., you can see that people at high risk already lose about 50% of the number of their smallest capillaries as compared to more healthy, low-risk individuals. Furthermore, we showed that in more uh, critical situations like in patients with COVID-19 or patients with sepsis in the ICU, they will lose even more capillaries, up to 95% of their smallest capillaries because of glycocalyx damage. And we believe that this significant loss of capillaries 
significantly contributes to the uh, problems at, or at an organ level in these patients. So when you lose 95% of your capillaries because of a damaged glycocalyx, you can imagine that there will be a lot of damage to organs like your kidney, your brain, your lungs, your heart. You know, understanding the, the impact of this damaged microvascular system and damage to glycocalyx turns out to be crucial to understand what's happening to these patients and makes it really clear that we need to think about you know, therapeutic options, how to help these individuals repair their glycocalyx and the microvascular system. So furthermore, in addition to just counting the number of capillaries, by combining it to measuring the level of glycocalyx damage with the glycocheck device, uh, we were able to develop what's called a microvascular health score. So this slide just shows you a normal range of microvascular health scores in healthy controls ranging between 4 and 8. It also shows an individuals with a compromised microvascular health or even further damage to their microvascular health is correlating with the number of organs that will be failing. These are data shown in a recent publication on sepsis patients. The sepsis patients with a damaged microvascular system, the more level of glycocalyx damage and more level of microvascular damage, see correlates with more and more organs failing in these individual patients. Now, after discussing the importance of glycocalyx to microvascular health and showing that with the, the glycocheck device, we can monitor an individual's microvascular health and how their glycocalyx is doing, it becomes apparent that we need to develop something, a therapeutic to target the improving the health of your microvascular system.